Hey weirdos. So I got something here today. As you can tell by that thud, it's a, it's a little bit of a big boy. So I've got this weird uh, Sega Game Boy here. Um, it's kind of weird. I didn't know Sega made Game Boys, but you know, I guess, I guess they did. Um, no, I'm kidding. So this is a Sega Game Gear and Man, when I was younger, I wanted the shit out of one of these things. It was so cool. Back in the day, these things had backlights. Game Boys didn't. These things had Sonic. Game Boys didn't. Hell yeah, I wanted one of these. Um, well, as we all know, um, these things weren't actually that. All, all they were hopped up to be. Um, still pretty cool, though. Uh, unfortunately, they're all pretty much plagued with capacitor issues. I don't know what the hell Sega was doing, but certainly using quality capacitors isn't one of the things they were doing. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to see if I can't get this thing rolling with a new capacitor kit. Um, now, say what you will about capacitor kits. I know for a fact that if you have the specs of the capacitor that you're looking for, you could just buy them cheaper from um, any common part suppliers like LCSC, DigiKey, Mauser, etc. But if you only need um, parts for one or two consoles and you're already making an order from someone who makes, who sells kits, generally it's worth it to just grab a kit. And that's exactly what I did, even though. For these three values, I am 100% sure I already have these on hand. These ones I don't, though. So, in the end, I think it's going to work out. Actually, oh god, I might actually have these. Never mind. That's besides the point. So, I have literally never even taken one of these things apart. Um, I don't even know what the symptom of needing new capacitors is, but this is what mine does. I don't have any batteries in this thing because I simply don't have six double A's, um, and you're not supposed to mix and match batteries, and this is what I got. I have these Panasonics, I have these, um, the, yeah, I don't, I just, I simply don't have six double A's that actually match, and I can throw in one of these chunky monkeys, but what I do have is one of these fancy dancy cables from, um, Jelly Belly Customs, they sell these Game Gear cables that outputs 9 volts, um, and you just jam it into a USB port, and uh, Bob Jonte. Um, but anyway, this is the uh, this is what my Game Gear does. Absolutely fucking nothing. Now it does boot, which is further than I was getting before. I swear. <laughs> it's probably because um, I just cleaned the game. But anyway, it boots, but they ain't shit on the screen. Now, we could probably solve that with a new screen. Uh, I do know that McWill is making, has been making screens for this thing for quite a while. Uh, ben Ven, I believe, is making a kit for this. I know there's some new kits coming from China, as well as the McWill co clones coming from China. But, and you know, you can see it is there. It is kind of working. Uh, there's this dial on the side. Uh, brightness, but really I think it's just adjusting the contrast. But anyway, let's throw some new caps in this beast and uh, see what happens. Since I know that is a common thing. And even if not, do it for the, for the lulz. Um, I have literally never taken one of these apart before, so forgive me if I go a little bit slower, because I don't even know what screwdriver I need. And yes, I am going to be doing some more Game Gear videos. Deal with it. Given the uh, time frame of when this thing was made, it's probably not very difficult to take apart. 
back in the 90s, everything was held together with screws, with actual fasteners that you can find. Nowadays, shit's all glued together, or fasteners are hidden under stickers, or... Like I said, glue. I hate that crap. But anyway. And don't even say it's about repairability, because this thing was not designed to be repairable either. Ooh, crunchy. I'm sure that's a good sign. Do we need that last one? Yeah, we do. So this last screw looks like a fucking huge version of the screw in a Game Boy game. If you have a game bit set, it's the larger of the two. And then that just comes off, doesn't it? Indeed it does. And that's it. Sorry, I'm just admiring this board here. So eventually, we're going to replace this, but not today. I guess I'm going to go ahead and get started with the audio and power boards. Set that aside for me. Oh, this thing is much cleaner on the inside than I thought it would be. So luckily, I have a handy dandy label here. Let me just scroll down. That's what we want. We want to pull this big guy this little guy and this little guy so all the black capacitors because those are the only capacitors on the board this is not a capacitor this is not a capacitor I have no idea what these two are um, anyway I'm gonna say one's an inductor and one's I don't know. I'm forgetting the name. And for those wondering, there is a way to test capacitors. It's nothing real feasible. Like, it's one of those things where I, I, I'm not intentionally gatekeeping, but if you have to ask, it's not in your budget. Um, they make what's called LCR meters. And uh, you can get one of those. You do have to, of course, remove the capacitor to test it. Um, but capacitors are cheap enough that it's worth just assuming they're all bad and throwing new ones at the situation. Now, in this particular case, I am just adding solder to these joints to give me some fresh solder. Get the solder molten, then pull the capacitor out. I think this one... Oh, there it goes. I 
just didn't have a good grip on it. All right. These three go right into the fuck it bucket. And to make life easier, I'm gonna use my suck here. My big suck. So this is one of those engineer SSO2 solder suckers. Highly, highly recommended. Yeah, you can get by with one of them cheapo suckers from AliExpress, but it is well worth the money if this is something that you do regularly, which in my case it is, so. What I should be using? My nice new helping hands. Right. And new ones, so the 820 microfarad cap goes. The uh, stripe here indicates the negative, which just match up the stripe. Oh, let me clean that up, that's weird. It's annoying. Sucker is jammed. I think that tip's removable. I will say, I've been using this thing for a few months now. Still haven't had to replace the tip. Still haven't had to take this thing apart to clear it. Whereas those cheapo ones, which are, sorry, I keep poking the camera, something like this. This is one of the higher end versions of the cheapo with the plastic tip. I swear I'd have to take these things apart and clean them like every third suck. And it was not great. Anyway, moving on. That goes in there. Just like that. leads down with my flush cutters. There they are. And that's it. Bingo, bango, bongo. And we just do that about a hundred more times. Okay, this one is the 100 microfarad cap, which goes right here. Why does it keep falling? There we go. There we go. Nice, healthy solder joints. And if you want to, you can touch them up after cropping them. And they'll look even better. Last one. So this one is the 22 microfarad cap, I believe. Yes, it is. And that goes right down here.
Notice it is much shorter than the one I pulled out of there. All of them are. Now, I'm not sure if that's because these caps are under spec or if that's just the difference between 30 year old caps and modern caps. I don't actually know what spec these other ones are. Because there's more to a cap than just um, capacitance and voltage. Though, for the most part, as long as you get those two right, pretty much anything should work for something like this. Again, it's one of those things where you, if you have to ask, you don't, don't really have to worry about it, I guess. All right, and it would be worthwhile to clean up my flux, get some nice, you know, because this thing is just surprisingly clean, so. Um, clean up my flux with some isopropyl alcohol on a cotton swab, but I will do that later. Do this first. Uh, so this, I believe, is going to be an issue. I don't know how people normally remove these. I believe most people end up just uh, ripping them off, and that is so bad, so bad. We do not want to rip them off. So I am going to pause for just a moment, clean up my desk, and I will be right back. Right, clean desk is a happy desk. I'm going to set my solder, my iron cleaning stuff thingy, sponge. I swear I know what it's called. What you do is you just jam your iron in there, cleans up the tip all nice. Set that right there. Um, get that out of the way so I don't knock it over. And I think when I did this with my, um, on my Game Boy Color, I ended up just whipping out a second soldering iron and that might be what I'm doing today. What I'm also doing is getting some helping hands. To hold this stupid thing in place. All the purpose. Another thing we can do, if I get both these pads hot enough at the same time, and just slide the thing off. Which is basically like using a second soldering iron, except um, without the second soldering iron. All right, and these are all 100 microfarad. So actually, let me just get them all off before I even start that. So it's that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Even that one? Interesting. Well, that's what Lukey Baby says to do, so that's what I'm gonna do. That is really annoying. I'll make it work. Yeah, I'm gonna get the second solder and iron. <sighs> I'm not gonna fight with that all night. It's not worth it. Not worth it at all. So for my second soldering iron, 
I have two choices. Three choices, actually. My other iron that I used last time is my Loner 951SX, made by Edson. Um, the most recent soldering iron that I showed, that wasn't the one I normally use, was a T80P or something, I believe. But the other one that I have on my desk that already has the tip in it that I'm looking for is a T100P, I think. Yeah. And I've got... And even though this one does not take USB-C, I'm going to use my USB-C power lead on it. I wonder. Nope. <laughs> there it is. I made this pigtail in a previous video. And all it does is take my USB PD power supply and give me 19 volts. Nope, that's not what I want. You have to hit B for it to heat up. There it goes. and hot. Indeed it is. And I'll just jam that one there. Jam that one there. And then we should be able to just slide it off. Maybe. There it goes. I should have pretend all these. Try my best is not to melt that connector. Get shit everywhere. Oh shoot, I had it. And one more. Boom, there we go. Clean that up, put it away. And I'll just use this one to finish stuff up because I have no stand for it. That's hot. These are hot when you, when you desolder them. And I keep grabbing the god dang thing. Okay. Need tweezers. There they are. And let's get these pads pricked. All right, what do I do with my caps there? I need what? One, two, three, four, five. Just gonna cut off as many as I need so I don't have to take it out of the labeled bag and get them all mixed up because capacitors are not individually labeled. Surface mount ones, anyway. Ceramic surface mount ones. Dump those out. How's that already sticking? Why is it going down? 
That was weird. I was wondering why my capacity for soldering basically died. Oh. So I feel it's worth mentioning, in case it's not immediate, immediately obvious. But um, ceramic surface mount capacitors are not um, polarized. So you can solder them whichever the hell way you want. enough I think. No, I don't like it. I'm going to spend all my time being a perfectionist. And this video is going to be an hour and a half long. even though that is perfectly fine. And you can't see it at all because I didn't realize that it is, uh, you know, framing angles and such. But whatever, those are the hard ones. Two more. I did one of the easy ones first. It's doing it again. There, my understanding is that is the sleep mode activating. But there's also supposed to be a uh, gyro in this thing to detect when it is being used so that it doesn't do that. And yet, here we are. Might actually need more heat. It's not, I don't know how to adjust this easily. I can plug it into my computer and adjust the file. There we go. Noise and strength. Me not knowing how to adjust it is not a comment on the iron, it's just a comment on uh, me not using this iron. Why did that happen? Oh, 
Okay. Nice, clean, beautiful solder joints. That's the audio board done. I am going to try not to burn myself. I'm going to set this over here. And the stand for my other iron that is not plugged in. All right, this is done. So it's probably a good idea to give both of those a clean, um, assuming Game Gears have similar problems to Game Boys, and that potentiometers and headphone jacks just collect dust and other filth. And uh, probably the same thing with this power switch, but I'm going to leave both as is for now. The uh, little orange thing is directional, so pay attention to that. I believe it'll fit both ways, but one way is the correct way. It is very obvious. All right. Next up is this part. Now, I think... Uh, we got to get to both sides. Okay. I have no idea how that works. I'm just going to remove every screw I see. Looks like these are all the same screws so far, except for those two big ones. And the two big ones are like so big that you can't mix them up if you wanted to. I mean, you can try. <laughs> don't, don't take that as a challenge. just like that. That does come out just like that. And the screen is on this little gasket here. I'm going to try not to lose. Oh, we don't need to get to both sides. What the hell was I doing? This doesn't need to come out at all. Does this use the same... Sorry. I'm going to get distracted for a minute here. Where is my DMG membranes? I got to know. That is the exact same part. So, if you, if you need a new membrane, there you go. All right. So, I didn't need to take that out at all. I'm kind of glad I did because that needs cleaning, but we'll do that later. In the meantime, that can stay there. Did not need to come out, but as I always say, a novice should always should never solder within the case. And in this particular case, I am a novice. So, which K 
capacitors do we need to get started with? So it looks like there's two different versions of the Game Gear, well, probably more than two, but two that we need to worry about. There's the one that I have with the big square chip and then the little rectangular chip on the right here and then the one rectangular chip on the left. There's another version with two rectangular chips on the left and two rectangular chips on the right. I don't have that version. <laughs> so I'm going to follow this guide here. It looks like there are 12 capacitors we need to get at. This, 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 yeah. Basically anything labeled C. So I'm pretty sure these are glued down. You know what? I think I can do all of these with one capacitor, or with one iron. So I'm going to nix this one for now. Places I need to start. So here's how you can tell that these have gone bad. See how the uh, solder joints on these are kind of crusty? That's because all the electrolyte ha inside the capacitor has leaked out. Like you can see on this one right here, it's gotten all over this diode too. So that will need to be cleaned up before I can where this thing's going to start working the way it should. There's a very familiar smell if you've ever uh, experienced this sort of thing. It's, it's not great. It's recognizable. It's not terrible. But it ain't great either. Come on. Wasn't what I was looking for, but I'll take it. My understanding is that the glue, there is glue that holds these capacitors down. The uh, glue will weaken if you just boil the crap out of the freaking capacitor. clean this board up. All right, and now we just need to do that 11 more times. I'm so sorry, I think that's out of focus. That one was quite a bit easier. I think I am going to take a few minute break though because my soldering iron stand is broken and my iron sits a little bit too low in the stand itself and makes contact which makes the handle super freaking hot. So if I have this on for a long time in the stand, it's just, it's, it gets, it gets hot. So I might switch back to the other iron. Turn this off, and uh, oh, it's right there. I suppose I could just, I don't actually have to go anywhere because it's right here. Heat, you bastard. Okay.
of it. This one looks like it's leaked. Two. Flip that around. Ooh, my tip is just a little bit too small for these two. Might be able to make it work anyway. Yeah, I think it should be fine. You know what this project's reminding me I need to do? Get a fume extractor. I think we'll do that right after this. I have a Marco, you can make one for a few dollars and a computer fan. Yes. Or I can buy one for a few dollars. They are not expensive. You know, I might just have to disable that sleep timer. Oof, that pad is uh, basically gone. Alright, so it looks like we're doing some trace repair too. Let me get this corrosion cleaned up first. Oh, whoops. I just stuck that into bubble wrap. Okay, so I need. Cotton swab. I need isopropyl alcohol. And hopefully that's it. But probably not.
So that could have actually been related to my uh, display problem. Is that one of the capacity yeah, it is? Given that this is probably the transformer for the uh, high voltage screen voltages. Let's use that. Uh, that pad is completely gone. Is that one gone? Or is there something under there? Ooh, that one, I see copper. Might be good on that one. Be good on that one. Try scraping this one a little bit more. Oop, I'm seeing copper. I'm seeing something shiny. That's a problem I didn't even think about. This just ruined my soldering iron stand. Well darn. Okay, I guess I can't use the, that stand for this iron. Uh. Shoot. Oh well. On my tip too. No, we're good. It cleaned up. So is that a copper pad I'm trying to solder to, or is that bare FR4? I cannot tell. But based on the fact that solder's still not sticking, I'm going to guess it's the latter. So I don't know what that shiny stuff I was seeing is. I just put a whole blob there and see if anything sticks. Oh, we might be in luck. I just got to deal with that. That's going to be a problem too, isn't it? Let's get it out of there. This is why capacitors suck.
All right, so I'm going to leave that sitting right there. Hopefully not melt anything. Because that would be unfortunate. You know what? I'm just going to unplug it while I'm doing this. <sighs> Maybe now I switch back to my other iron. All right, so I got lucky. All five of those joints are covered. Three on the diode, one on the capacitor, and then one on the resistor. That's why we love failed capacitors. That one's gonna be a bitch to get at. Might have to rip that one off. Oh, you know what? We totally can. I'm just gonna slip in here with my flush cutters. One, two, boom. Oh man, that is so much easier. I'm do that for all of them. No, I'm not. I got lucky. All right, whatever. I'm not going to press my luck. All right, this is probably cool. Set it all the way the fuck over there, though. Just in case. Oh, I totally should have cleaned this. A good way to fucking launch something. Alright. Hopefully that'll be good enough. Alright, so I'm just putting the resistor back on. It's taking solder on both sides. I said it's taking solder on both sides. There we go. Still a little worse for the wear. I think we'll be good. Ugh. That thing is still covered in capacitor guts. I'm about to run into the same problem with my iron again. Putting it back in the holder. I should buy a new iron holder too while I'm at it. I wonder if this is a common part and I'm just like wasting my time trying to salvage it. Be right back. This is exactly what the hemostat tool was made for.
All right. Well, you know what? It just occurred to me. I have six jubies. I could power this thing. This thing is not taking solder. Oof, that was lucky. There's plastic on my iron. Take solder, you bastard. Yeah, this thing is not taking solder. I need to do more scraping. Well, the good news is I haven't scraped the legs clean off, so there should be enough material once I get it exposed to actually solder to. Bent that one a little. Come on. <sighs> this is what it's all about right here. Recapping the game gear. Let that solidify and try something. Go on. You can do it. <gasps> it's stuck. Didn't stick very well, but it did stick. Probably a better way to do this. But this is what I got.
All right, I think solder's sticking to that leg. I don't know if it's sticking to that tip though. I don't think it is. Screw it, let's try it anyway. this game gear before I'm done. Oh! Almost. One leg is soldered. Not very well, mind, but it is soldered. Ugh, not anymore. I swear at this point, it'd be better to just replace the Jesus thing. This diode. Oh my god, oh, nope. I thought it stuck. It did not stick. Maybe I should drown it in some ultra corrosive flux and just hope for the best. Oh, now it's stuck down. Why are you sticking? You gonna actually behave for me? Here so neat. All right. Come on, really? Oh, I think we've got it. If this doesn't work, I know why. But I think we've got it. Screw it. I'm done messing with it. It either works or it doesn't at this point.
Mmm, stinky. Love the smell of electrolyte. Burning electrolyte. If you have a Game Gear that you've been putting off doing the caps on, I highly recommend not putting it off any further, any longer than you have to. Right. Two more and we're done with half the board. Well, removed the caps for half the board. Luckily, I don't think any are close enough to components to harm them. Other than the ones I've already done. Just one. Three more, not two more. Ooh. That one destroyed that pad. Oh, it destroyed both of them. Cool. Love it. Yeah, this explains why working game gears are so expensive. silk screen or the uh, solder mask is coming up got it though and that's enough to solder to okay Whew. all right how many caps do I have over here one two three four five one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, three more. do these while I'm here. Uh, 
They all sound good though, so I think we're good. Still nasty and I hate them, but good enough. Okay, two more. I gotta flip the board this way. Probably gonna accidentally desolder one of the smaller caps next to this one. how much of the board came off of that. That is not good. Nope, oh, that's still solder. I can still solder to that, don't worry. Ooh, this one's nice and gross. Didn't fight me though, so it's okay. Quit being ridiculous. I guess we're going to flip that resistor around. That was not what I meant to do. Just wanted to straighten them out so they weren't banging into each other. But uh, one of them is uh, upside down now. Not what I meant to do. resorted to scraping with my soldering iron. Alright, there we go. This one's good enough. Far from good. Cool. I have all 12 desoldered. That only took 45 minutes. Um, now I am going to for real take a break though and just clean this up with cotton swab, isopropyl alcohol, all of them, and just get all the remaining capacitor juices out and hope for the best. I'll be back. All right, 
way too many freaking cotton swabs later. And here we are, I've got it mostly cleaned up. Still a few small areas I would like to um, touch up again, but I think we'll be good. Uh, notably this capacitor. Okay, I'm not gonna have any problems with this one. And I need to push this leg down on the diode. Because it was floating in the air. Remember when I accidentally bent it, I forgot to bend it back. Good enough. All right, I think, I think that's it. So I was alluding to this earlier. I mentioned that not all capacitors or there's more properties to a capacitor than just capacitance and voltage. Um, so the original capacitors that I removed from this board, these chunky monkeys, these are electrolytic capacitors. They do have a polarity to them. There is a positive and a negative. I don't know specifically what properties made uh, Sega choose electrolytic. I do know that... Um, Oh, you can see under that all the uh, electrolytes spilling out. Um, I do know that in the 90s, when this thing was made and designed, um, electrolytic capacitors were more bang for the buck. Ceramic capacitors were around, obviously. There's already quite a few on the board. But they didn't perform nearly as well as they did today. So I'm hoping that's the only reason that electrolytic capacitors were chosen on the original board um, because the replacements today are all uh, ceramic <coughs> excuse me I'm gonna start with the one microfarad capacitors There's only two of them. All right, these two go. Let me scroll up. God, that is an awful color scheme. But they go, looks like right here and here. So these two. I am going to just flood that with solder. See if I can't just drop this in. Let me fix that too. Oh yeah. And this one. Side, some more on that side. Boom. There's my two one UF capacitors, microfarad. Uh, now I guess I will do the five ten UF capacitors. Oh, 
a little bit confused by how much this includes. So I had exactly enough one microfarad, but I clear to have plenty of leftover ten microfarad. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to take care of that. Ooh. Five ten capacitors. And three of them go over here. just want it to be perfect. Damn it. I'd be done by now if I didn't keep obsessing over this. Good enough. I'm leaving it. Cool, 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 cool. Two more. <clears throat> so the blue ones, so one of them goes here. Someone's awake. The other goes down here.
All right. Five more. And I might spontaneously take a break without warning because I forgot to clear off storage on my phone. Luckily, this whole dynamic bitrate stuff is working out for me. Based on the fact that there is not a lot of movement in my videos. But, still. Hopefully it'll be enough time to get this thing put back together and test it. I don't know why I do this every time. Up last we have the 100 microfarad capacitors. And that's just basically every other, every remaining spot. Maybe I'll just leave that one crooked, because that pad's all messed up anyhow. Uh, oh, I forgot these two. So thankfully with ceramic capacitors, there is basically no electrolyte. I mean, functionally, I'm pretty sure they still work the same, just not a liquid electrolyte. But these should last indefinitely. There should be no reason to ever open this game gear up again. At least no... At least the capacitors will never have to be serviced if this thing is opened up again, in theory. Cool, 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 cool. We're done. I'm going to put it back together now. A cool hour and a half later. This thing's in great condition, but you know.
I think there is always going to be dust in that, almost no matter what I do. in there. Oh, you know what? I'm learning all sorts of new stuff today. There's screws I never should have removed. Well, Quite frankly, I shouldn't have removed any of them. This did not need to come apart. Lay that down in the shell first. And we'll drop that down. Try to actually screw in all these screws. And then flip it over. It's all good. Cool, cool, cool. Speed run this shit, put it back together. In the off chance you're actually still watching this video, I know some of you weirdos do. I get told that uh, I help put you to sleep, which I don't take offense to. I take it as a compliment, but it's still weird. But anyway, thanks for uh, taking the time to watch this instead of doing something better with yourself, like watching a movie. Literally would have been less time. Big boys. I suppose while I'm putting this back together, I can ramble a little bit more. So I'm not sure um, 
why specifically the capacitors in these things tend to go the way they do. Um, that is a common failure mode for capacitors where they just puke their guts out. But, you know, I don't know, like, like why Sega? Game Boys have been around just as long and the capacitors in those aren't known for being terrible. Now, my, my point is, I don't know, did Sega cheap out on capacitors? Did the OEM cheap out on capacitors? You know, what happened? Because, yes, when capacitors fail, that is the typical failure mode. But I should make the point that failures or capacitors typically don't fail. Sega single-handedly convinced an entire generation of enthusiasts that capacitors are unreliable. And with good reason, mind, but they also convinced an entire generation of consumers that their consoles are not worth buying if you want long-term reliability. Also, six double A's. Holy crap. That's that cold cathode tube in there. That's why you need six double A's. There goes no nothing. Well, it's kind of not what I was hoping for. I'm thinking maybe it just didn't read the game. And after all that and the Jesus thing it doesn't work. There it goes. Aha. Good God, that looks terrible. So yeah, this isn't brightness, this is literally contrast. I hate that they have it labeled brightness. You know, it's amazing how hard it is to actually tell those symbols apart. Like, the screen is just such a blurry, low-resolution mess. But... Hey, it's a backlight. Is that not how you play Mahjong? Am I not playing Mahjong? To do something else? Yeah. To hit A again, or one, excuse me. Alright, well, that's that. Now that this thing is working, I need to go send it off where it needs to go. Um, but now we all know that is what bad caps look like on a Game Gear. And uh, <laughs> that is how we fix them. Um, for context, here is here's another one. Here's for shits and giggles. We'll uh, I'll play with this one some more later. You see how the screen comes on and then just goes dark. No sound. Nothing. Done. Boop. Now again, it could just not be reading it, but yeah. Anyway, until next time, I'm probably not going to do another video on uh, recapping these Jesus things because it takes me so much longer to do it on video than it does 
uh, to do it off camera and that was already a significant commitment of my time. So thanks for watching guys. I hope this helped someone somewhere. Um, either fix your game gear or at least stave away boredom for darn near two hours. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you next time. I've got more game gear stuff coming up. But until then.